Hello and welcome to Mary Makes. I'm Mary and today I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing my new Kato Electric Yarn Winder. This video is of course sponsored by Kato. They sent me this yarn winder for me to unbox and review with you today. Um, and let's just dive right in. I'm going to open it right up. Here's a part there. Um, here's the machine itself. Let me take that out of the wrapper. Double wrap for you. Do here is the ooh spool. I guess you would call this where all the yarn will be wound onto. Instruction booklet. Um. USB-C to USB cord, um, a metal part, and ooh, a screwdriver and some screws. All right, I'm gonna lay this all out and uh, take a look at how to assemble this thing. So here is everything that was in the box. I took a peek at the instructions. There is a QR code for an installation and usage video, but really the steps seemed pretty self-explanatory and I'll just walk you through how to assemble it really quick. So first uh, we're gonna get our little screwdriver here and you only need three of these screws, but they've included some extras. So I'll just, I'll just take out three and we'll set those other two aside. The first step is to attach this metal piece to the yarn guide. This, um, this piece with these springs, this is where we'll be threading the yarn through. And all I'm gonna do is line up the holes here. And it looks like you could line this up um, either with the top two holes or the bottom two. I think for now I'll just align it with the bottom two and we'll get these screwed in. Oops, come back here, little screw. As far as like my yarn winding journey goes, I've always had a either a manual yarn winder or I've just like hand balled up my yarn uh, by itself. Um, growing up, you know, I used to crochet with my mom all the time and uh, I got into more than a few uh, yarn messes and we always had those like cheap little hand cranky yarn winders that you can buy from like your Joann's, Michael's, your local craft stores and and I, none of those are here with me today. None of, the, none of those ever lasted. They all frankly broke or the gears um, wore out over time but I'm excited to see how this yarn winder goes. And I'll actually, before I test this one out, I'll show you what I'm using currently to wind my yarn. It is a manual yarn winder. So we'll be taking a look at like the manual versus the electric aspect of it. But anyways, here's my first piece with the uh, metal piece screwed into it. Let's see, step number two, we are just inserting this piece into the machine itself. Oh, okay, that was that was nice. And I'm going to put another screw right here. Oh, what a handy little tiny tool. I'm a big fan of tiny tools. Okay, so that's secured. And then finally, last step is just to attach this. Okay, loose, fasten, seems easy enough. There it is. Okay. Well, I've got this all set up. Uh, let me show you my current yarn winder and then we'll test this out. So here it is. This is my current yarn winder. It is a Knitter's Pride manual winder. There's no gears on it because like I said, all of the yarn winders I've had in the past that had gears, either the gears started skipping, they w stopped, uh, they, they just wore out and I didn't want to deal deal with gears anymore, so I purchased this one a couple years back. Um, it does, you know, have its own set of pros and cons. One, it's kind of big, it's heavy, it's made of solid wood, which, you know, you might really like. Um, two, it does use a, like, belt here that um, is recommended that you remove when you're not using this yarn winder. And then three, 
when using this yarn winder, you can't just like wind it and let it go. Like I'm usually winding with my right hand and using my left hand to control the tension and how tight it winds the yarn onto the spool. Um, but you know, a lot of manual labor here to wind up all of this yarn I have behind me. A, uh, a thing I did this summer was to pick up a new hobby, which is rug tufting, which I'd love to tell you about in a future video. But rug tufting requires a lot more yarn balling, yarn caking um, than crocheting or knitting does. So I'm actually really eager, eager to see how this like fits into my hobbies and the shenanigans that I get up into. So let me actually attach this to my table over here and we'll start testing it out. Last thing, because I know I'm gonna get a bunch of questions on this, is how much are these yarn winders? How do they compare? Um, this Knitter's Pride one I bought from Michaels a couple years back and I think I spent around $100 for this one. This Kato electric yarn winder, this one retails for $100, but it's currently 30% off, so it's about $70. Okay, now let's go wind some yarn with this. Okay, so I have attached my yarn winder to my table here. Um, table, this is an Ikea Kallax, just one of those like cube storage units. And I've plugged it in. Um, kind of just want to turn it on. Oh, okay, so that's on the plus side. Can I keep going? Oh my gosh, let's go. Okay, I don't know if we'll be yarn winding yarn that fast, but let's see. Let me get an actual ball of yarn now. All right, so I've got a ball of Red Heart Super Saver yarn here. I use this yarn a lot, and I'm just gonna kind of pull some out just because it's like more stiff when you're first pulling it out of the center. Um, and then we're gonna thread this together. Okay, so th to thread this machine, and, and I just read the instructions, First, we insert our yarn through the bottom hole here. Then we're going to lift up this spring and guide our yarn into the, I don't know, the space in between these two plastics. And then the spring just like rests on top of the yarn, providing it with some tension. Then we thread it through this hole out here. We do the same thing with the next spring, lifting it up and guiding it into the well. And then finally, inserting the yarn into the final hole. Um, and then, uh, checks notes, we're going to take our yarn and wrap it counterclockwise around the spool twice, and then the picture actually shows it doing like this, where it's underneath the live yarn here. Um, I guess I'll just do that. And then we secure it to the top where there's two little grooves in here. I might be leaving myself kind of a long tail, but I don't mind if this just gets, um, you know, winded into the center. Um, but okay, I, th I think I've set it up right. Here, I'll just throw this ball of yarn off to the side there. I do have a, I am gonna get it started a little. Oop. So I do have kind of a pool of yarn on the floor here, but let's just let it go. I'm gonna turn it on. So we'll start at a low speed first. Okay, 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 so perfect. It caught my yarn end. Oh, and look at it go. Okay, look at that. Oh, oh, okay. How is it going to deal with this? Oh, all right. Because cause the yarn's not tangled. It's just a little... Well, maybe I should just not mess with it. Oh, that's kind of nice. It like the machine stopped when I started messing with the yarn. Okay. I mean, that's a good thing, right? You don't want your yarn winder to just go crazy if it's got like a knot or something into it. All right. And then, oh, I wonder if I activated automatic shut off. Let me turn it off and then back on again. Okay. 
And we are back in business. So right now I have the knob turned so that the mark is down here. And I think I'm just gonna let it go at this speed for a little. Oh, and that's what I was thinking about it being stiff coming out of the ball of yarn. Oh, okay. I wonder how much help, how much more help it really needs. Ooh, oh, okay, it's doing it. What if I increase like the power on this thing? Oh, oh, there we go. Now we're in business. Okay, wow, that's really fast. Okay, this is max power. That's that's the highest speed this goes. Oh my gosh. Wow, what a, what a game changer. And, and my hands are free. Like I, I could just go and leave and like go get a snack. Oh my gosh. Also, it's really fun to wind yarn that changes colors, right? Because then you can watch the colors change. Um, I don't know if I'll make you watch all of this. You can skip ahead, but I'm gonna sit here and watch this yarn wind itself because it's doing a great job of it. Wow. And, and this cake so far, it looks good. Like it's not a messy cake. And from what I can tell, the tension is consistent. And especially now that we're really getting into the ball and rolling into it, it's really just going. I'm, I'm color me impressed. I'm impressed. Wow. So I guess this is what I'm thinking in my mind. I have a couple of bags of yarn in my basement of yarn that family's member like gave to me. And it would take me quite some time to ball up all of that yarn, but I could have this machine go work on one ball while I use like my manual roller to ball up another one. Oh, and it looks like we've got a little, little yarn baby here at the bottom. My manual one does this too though, so I think this is normal. It's just at some point, the yarn is gonna overflow the ball it has and need more vertical space. Um, but usually by the end of the yarn roll, all of this will be covered and all of that will be tucked inside. Ooh, it kind of slowed down. Oh. oh, we got a knot. Let's fix this. Okay, I'm gonna turn this back off. And turn it on again and we're back in business uh, woo. okay I just threw it back into max speed maybe that was not the right plan maybe I'm being too aggressive but even if I had this going at half the speed and I was able to just walk away and do something else with my life rather than wind yarn this is this is really nice wow I think my mom would actually love this it snagged, I fixed it, and then it just picked up right where it left off. That's actually really nice. I wonder if this would go better too if I left this ball of yarn like on the floor, because then there would be more distance between it and the ball of yarn, but I kind of just wanted to show you what was happening to the yarn ball back there. Wow, look at this ball of yarn. Oh, got a knot here. Okay, let me fix that. Oh, and it picks it up right back up. Oops, okay. Let me kind of help with the bottom, the end of this ball of yarn. Okay. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm just helping the yarn come out of the ball that's in my hand and letting the machine take care of the rest. Wow, that is still really nice though. Ordinarily, when I get to this part of balling up a ball of yarn, well, that was redundant, of balling up yarn, I normally have to alternate between being the one to spin the yarn, to crank the machine, or and work the other end where I'm detangling and feeding it. But it's actually really nice to just have this machine do it for me. Oh, one little knot that I'm going to fix here. 
I brought that on myself. Okay. And there we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me turn this off. Wow, that was exciting. Okay, okay. So let me turn this around. Okay. Ah, I'm a bit of a weirdo and I like to keep my yarn labels. So I usually just roll up the label and then I just like stick it here and then remove my yarn from the machine. Oh, okay, that was nice. That little bit of yarn barf I had earlier, I'm just gonna tuck in here. Huh. Well, all things considered, that was excellent. And like for my first ball of yarn, not really knowing how to work the machine, look how pretty this is. And then I can just tuck in the end and boom, I'm ready to go. Okay. I think I'm gonna go ball up some more yarn and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so final thoughts on the electric yarn winder from Kato and all in, I have to say I'm really impressed. So here again is the first ball of yarn I wound. It's a little messy, but I'm pretty sure it's because I left my ball of yarn on the table just right next to the yarn guide. This next ball of yarn I wound, um, I left the super saver ball of yarn on the floor so it had more distance between the yarn ball and the yarn guide and it just wound this one up so nicely and like so pretty i'm I, i'm impressed and then i had to go and wind up more yarn i actually wound up another three balls here and i just I'm blown away at how easy it was to assemble, how easy it is to thread the yarn and set it, and then just walk away. Um, the machine stops if it hits a snag, so you can come back, check it, fix it, or um, I actually sat here working on another crochet project while I was watching it. And I don't know, I'm like, my arm normally gets really tired after hours of yarn winding. Like I'm thinking of those bags of yarn I have in my basement that I need to clean up and organize. And I just, for its price point, for being a $70 yarn, electric yarn winder, it's an excellent gift for anyone who has a ton of yarn to wind. Um, so link in the description. If you purchase using my link, I do earn a small commission, but overall I would recommend this product. I definitely see myself continuing to use it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.